Hello everybody! Welcome to Wednesday evening's unscheduled uh, edition of How to Build a Tomcat. So, uh, had some internet difficulties this earlier this week where I couldn't upload the other videos and they have since then disappeared from my computer. So, you don't get to see how I did the whole internal structure thing. But, internal structure for this wing panel is done. Um, did a lot of, uh, made a lot of mess, made a lot of scraps that don't get used or get thrown away because they didn't fit properly. But after a couple of days, I got it all situated. Um, one thing that's always kind of annoyed me, I guess, on other F-14s, and this is kind of just about every manufacturer or every F-14 that I've seen on the market ever has always had a little 90 degree notch about like that in the wing group so it could uh, clear the uh, the center spar section going through the fuselage and that's always kind of annoyed me and I had intentions on avoiding that with this one but I can't <laughs> so I had to I had to kind of modify my plans to account for that, which if I'd known beforehand, I could have built that notch into the molds, but since I didn't plan that well enough, what it all comes down to, I had to kind of change some things around. So what I'm gonna do is see if I can't get this thing tilted up for all of you guys. And we will zoom in a bit and I'll show you guys what we got. You can see I've got all the carbon and everything in there. This wing is actually ready to close up so that's the plan for this evening and on this video is to close this wing. Alright, so we got our main spar shear web. Again this is not a spar in the essence of a typical spar. It's more of a shear web, like on a conventional built up wing, than it is a wing spar. The, the actual wing spars are built into the layup. That's what all that carbon fiber toe is. So that toe goes up directly under this shear web around the bearing here and then back down again. So you have this huge, basically, eye hook that runs the full length of the wing panel, all the way out to the wing tip. It goes around the bearing block, and then back again. And then it's doubled up more along these little uh, split offs here. So it's extreme, there's a lot of carbon under all of this shear webbing, and surrounding the whip on this bearing holder to keep it from shearing away. And that, that carbon toe on this lip basically keeps the whole thing together and from pulling, pulling away. This wing skin by itself is extremely, uh, it's very strong, very rigid. It does flex by itself, but it's just the skin. So once all of this structure gets put in here, this wing, I have, I have very little doubts that it's not going to be strong enough, but there's still that possibility. So anyway, you got the main shear web in here that runs from the bearing holder, and it's cut and knocks to where it fits into the recess of how the bearing holder is, is shaped and lined up. And it goes all the way out to the wingtip all the way out here to where I've got a wingtip rib and then all this is epoxy together then I've got the rear sub spar again it's not really a spar it's more of a shear web the, the interdirectional carbon fiber and the wing skins is more of the, uh, the spar cap than this and this is more of a shear web and that that rear sub spar slash shear web comes all the way and then we have a center span wing rib and it keeps on going until it gets all the way to a secondary root rib comes all the way to the actual root rib itself that's molded in with the wing skin and then it ties all of this together again and here you see my little piece let me move the camera up for you guys you see my little adjustment piece here all of the stuff inside of the wing skin here will get notched out to account for 
the, the wings are and everything being in the way. And that's the reason for this this rib here. It kind of triangulates everything to tie it back into a nice strong strong piece again. And then you'll also see as it goes further forward, I'll zoom this in a bit more. So you guys can get a pretty decent look of it. The primary main spar shear web and then the secondary stuff that comes in and it, it's fits snug against this bearing holder. And the reason why I've got it fits fitting snug, you know, if you can see in the video, it's actually notched on the top sides to fit around the flange that butts up the bottom of the, the top wing skin. It does the same thing on the bottom. So once all this gets epoxied in place, this bearing holder is going to be sandwiched on both sides by the, the tip, the wing tip side of it, and then this piece of plywood here that's epoxied up against the root rib. And this this whole bearing holder is not going to move unless some serious damage occurs. And the reason for this piece of plywood is I've got two blind nuts epoxied in here. The pivot actuator bracket will bolt right up against here, and this bracket and this piece of plywood and all these bar shear webbings sits here in. It basically takes the pivot actuator, the pivot bearings, and everything for the wing structure all in one central location. Puts a lot of stress here, but that's why it's built up and so beefy right here. And so all that stress gets transferred to the most important part. These bearings that's transferred into that, that pivot bracket and then the carbon carry through spar and the fuselage. This thing is built to withstand a lot of force. I'm wanting this airplane to withstand 10 G's continuous without having to worry about the wings folding. So I'm gonna stress it to 10 G's, and I might even go up to 12, depending on if I feel froggy that day. <laughs> so that's the whole wing structure. Hopefully, it kind of brings some light as far as what all I've been doing and what all I've been talking about. Because it's kind of, it's a different way of doing the wing spar and everything than just a conventional spar like you would see in a, another composite airplane where it's just a piece of basically that. So it's different. This is more in line with what the, the discus launch glider guys and a lot of those uh, the high performance like hotliners and the F3B guys. A lot of the technology and the processes that they use I'm trying to implement into this because those guys they know how to build a strong airplane that's extremely light. So just going through on RC groups, they've got a lot of good build threads on there for those guys doing that stuff. I mean, you, you could spend months researching how to do and just what, and just reading their build threads on how they do their stuff and still not know the exactly, exactly how they do it. But again, spend the time, do the research, and you'll, you'll learn a ton just by reading and seeing these guys how they do it. And that's basically how I taught myself how to do a lot of this stuff. Kind of a little bit of composites for, for full-scale aircraft work, but do most of this stuff, it's easy. It is not rocket science. Granted, some of it seems like it is. But if you read, you ask questions, the right questions, <laughs> you can get answers and you'll really, you can learn a lot. The hardest part about molding is getting over your own personal fears of putting all your plug work and encasing it in a moxie and fiberglass. That's, that's the hardest part. That's why you start with something small. You learn a ton on just a bunch of small little molds. So, I mean, even between the molds on this thing and the molds on that Horton back there, there's things about the Horton mold that are a whole lot better than, this, than some of these F-14 molds, which is kind of depressing. <laughs> but it is what it is. All right, so I'm gonna go put some uh, hardener in my resin, and we're gonna start making us an F-14 wing.
Now you're probably wondering how that pivot uh, point's gonna be the perfect position. You see the little aluminum disc here? These, uh, there's a hole built into the molds that you can see the bolt sticking through. That's the exact posi position of the pivot point. So with this little disc, there's one on the other side too, it'll actually, uh, it'll locate that pivot bearing holder exactly where you want it. And then the cutout in the wing skin, I'll show you guys how I did here in a moment. So, put mine in the back of my head for a few seconds. Now the, the rush of bolts. I need my buddy Tom over here. Down for you guys. We'll uh, 